welcome back farmers and friends to another video here on the beginner's guide series for farming simulator 22 in the topic of this beginner series video here is going to be harvesting fields now before i get started with the actual explanation of harvesting and what we're looking for and how we know when it's time to actually conduct a harvest of a field i just want to remind everyone i do have an initial beginner series video that went out that yeah, i'm not going to say it's necessarily geared towards helping players that are brand new to the game uh, but it is five things i wish i'd have known when i started playing farming simulator 22 uh, back in the day again i'm not a super mega like farming sim 22 expert but i do know enough that i can take what i have learned over time put it in these videos for you guys to consume use and put into practice when you're getting started on farming simulator 22 as well now the intent here is going to be i would like to create some shorter style videos that are more geared towards focusing on one task that you'll encounter around the farm i want to cover things like harvesting fields which we're going to do in this episode i want to talk about plowing fields cultivating fields fertilizing seeding herbicide weeding fields field stone I just kind of want to cover a lot of the core concepts of the game that beginner players are typically going to see the most when they're getting started. They're always going to have to harvest fields. You're always going to have to plow fields. You're always going to have to seed fields. You're always going to have to fertilize fields. And I'll show you some ways that you can make the game a little bit more user-friendly when you're first getting started. But without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about harvesting our fields. So the first thing to note is that in order to harvest a field, there are two different ways in which we're going to be able to conduct a harvest. That is either through owning the field, which again is we own field 45, 46, 44. And then for the purposes of this video, I went ahead and bought this oat field here in uh, plot 41 just so we'd have a little bit more field that we could harvest, which is going to give us a little bit more product that we're going to pull off of the field. Now, again, I talked about it in the last episode, but if you take a look over on the right side of the screen, you have all your different crop types. That's how I know that field 41 is an oat field, because with that, if I were to go down and turn oat off, the color of field 41 disappears and then reappears as well. That's a good quick way that you can filter through to make sure that you have the right crop. Um, or if you're purchasing a field and you want to know what crop is in there, you can uh, do that as well because some crops are not as easy to harvest as others. Wheat, barley, canola, oat, corn, sunflower, soybeans, all those are relatively easy to harvest. Potatoes and sugar beets, on the other hand, not so easy, not so fun. Uh, <laughs> And just very time consuming. Uh, cotton is another one. Cotton is very easy to harvest. It's just a very expensive crop to harvest. It, it's just, yeah, the cotton harvesters are extremely expensive. Don't recommend it for being like a starting a starter field. Like if for like prime example, I would not recommend getting started with like field 51 or anything like that because cotton harvesters, as you're going to see here shortly, they're just extremely expensive. 485,000 and then we basically double that and we jump all the way up to 850,000 and even if you're like well I'll just lease it yeah it's $43,000 to lease it which for reference right now is nearly a third of my total money that I have on hand and that 43,000 is paid right up front so again long story to give you the short version and just say don't get started with cotton wait until the late game to uh, start experimenting with cotton fields now back to our crop uh, calendars here and crop types. So taking a look at our oat field here, now that we've identified that it is an oat field, uh, again, we know that we own it because the number of the field is turned blue, which means that we do own that. You could also, I have an Xbox controller here playing on PC. You could uh, click down the left thumbstick and then any of the areas highlighted in blue are areas that you own. We would actually have the option to sell this land back if we so choose to do so and we would make $150,000, we could sell uh, area number one back, and we would lose everything that's on there except for the equipment, I'm pretty sure, but we'd lose access to our farmhouse, we'd lose access to the barns, silos, stuff like that, because we no longer own that property. Now, when we're looking at whether or not crops are ready to be harvested, I did, again, talk about this a little bit in the first video, but what we're looking for is any field that is outlined in orange or i guess filled in in orange and those are all of our fields that are ready to harvest so just to make this very easy 
currently right now, these are all the fields on the map that are ready for harvest to include field 41. So I set this up to where I'd have field 41 available to us so that we could go in and start the harvesting process. And as I turn all these back on, we'll start to see all the other fields that we have around us. We are here to harvest wheat. So if we get out here and we take a look at our oat field that we just purchased for the soul for the sole purpose of just this video right now we can see there are some weeds in here it does look like there was at one point in time some weeds in here but they are withered so that's good we want we don't want active active weed growth our yield bonus right now is 50 percent, and i think i know exactly why uh it says that the field needs lime lime should technically be laid on the field before you do any uh seeding or anything like that uh, lime just really helps to balance out like the pH levels of the soil it, and again that's like more of a precision farming type thing there are some things that the game's going to want you to do in order to get the maximum yield bonus possible which is typically going to fall around 98 99 maybe 100 percent at, at certain points in time I'd be willing to guess that this field has only been fertilized one time now, jumping into the harvester, you're gonna take a look up in your upper left-hand corner. Note that there is like a little bit of a, I'll try to zoom in on it here in the video as well. There's a little combine icon and with a header attached to it. Currently right now, the header is what is highlighted. Now, if I just hit Y on my controller, now the harvester itself is highlighted. If I hold down left bumper, I'm going to get a couple different options that it's going to allow me to select from. Uh, going from the top down to the bottom, I can fold the harvester, which is going to close the grain hopper. But I'm going to unfold that because we need it unfolded for harvesting this field. I can turn on the harvester. And then I can enable or disable the straw swath, which I will do a couple passes with the straw swath enabled and one without it enabled as well. Uh, once your grain hopper's full, you have the option to uh, boom the pipe out. And I have my grain cart sitting over there just to the right of us. Uh, basically, once we pipe out and we pull up to the grain cart, it'll automatically discharge any of our product into our cart. And we can start to fill that up, which will empty the combine harvester, which allows us to get back out onto the field and continue harvesting our product. Uh, map views just basically can change the size of the map. I'm gonna turn it off just for right now. And then we can actually change some of the header options here is what is being represented by the uh, right thumbstick button there at the bottom. Some headers, you'll be allowed to move some stuff around. I really don't know, I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't know what effect it really has on the header. If it changes anything, if it gives you more crop that you pull, less crop, I have no idea. I typically don't mess with it, but it's there. And I figured I would at least share that with you guys. If I hit right bumper, we can uh, take that opportunity to honk our horn, which you can barely hear. Left bumper, right bumper at the same time is basically just going to toggle our cruise, con or, yeah, our cruise control. And then we can also adjust the cruise control speed, which is pretty nice because if you are working either with an AI worker or maybe you're doing like a multiplayer map, uh, as long as someone knows what the cruise control speed is set at for the combine, you can set your cruise control speed for your tractor. And while someone is harvesting the field, you can pull up alongside with the tractor and actually actively discharge grain into your trailer while still harvesting the field. It's a great way to keep the combine harvester running so that way no one has to stop and wait around for the trailer to come so that they can offload all of the product. But with that, once we're to this point, we are ready to start the harvest. So again, how we got here, just gonna kinda go over everything. If I highlight the actual header itself, not the combine harvester, I have the option to lift and lower the header. And I'm just doing that with left bumper and B on my controller. So right now I am ready to harvest this field. I can also turn the header off if I needed to for whatever reason. But if I am ready to harvest this field, I'm, I have my combine harvester unfolded. Let's go ahead, we can lower the header we can turn the header on and you're simply just going to drive onto your field once you drive onto the field you're going to notice that the crop begins to be processed through the header and you can see down in the lower right hand corner by our speedometer our percentage is going up ever so slowly 
as we continue to harvest this field. We've currently pulled about 250 liters of oat off of this field. Now, once we max out the combine harvester, that's the point in which we're gonna have to go over and tip whatever oat we've pulled off this field into the grain cart. And that way we can reset ourselves back down to 0% in the combine and we can come back out here and continue to harvest this field. Now, solely a technique, uh, you do not necessarily have to have straw swath enabled. If you do not want the straw, you don't have to drop it into a swath like you see here behind the combine. I'll kind of zoom out so you can see it just a little bit better. Um, I'll do another pass here where I turn it off and you guys can see what happens with that. The benefits and perks of dropping a straw swath is you can bale that kind of stuff up or you can pick it up with a forage wagon. And if you're getting into like animal productions, there is a point in which um, straw, straw is needed uh, to produce or help make food. And it's also needed for cow pens, uh, for like bedding type material and stuff like that. So it does serve a purpose. Um, however, and you can also just bale it and sell it for money if you really want to. So in the early game, I would say take advantage of whatever you can for making money. Now, in this pass right here, what I'll do is I'll disable the straw swath, and you guys will see what the big difference is going to be here as I harvest this next section of the field. Rather than drop it in the swath, it just spreads everything out across the whole entire field. Now, the areas of the fields that I typically will do first is exactly how I'm doing it now. I'll just do an outline of the whole entire field, which is referred to as a headland. And what this is gonna really do for me, especially if the field is kind of surrounded by trees or a densely wooded area to where maybe I don't have much room off of the field to maneuver the combine, these passes that I do here are just gonna kind of help me to create a little bit of extra space to maneuver my combine. So now, rather than heading all the way across the whole entire field up to the very end, I take a few passes on these headlands. I create a little bit more space for the combine to maneuver and I don't have to worry about running into any trees. This is especially beneficial if you're gonna use AI workers. AI workers have a tendency to get themselves into a little bit of a jam with your equipment. And by jam, I mean legitimately jam. They'll drive right into the trees sometimes, especially if you have some mods installed that help to override the uh, working speed limit. Now, while you are combining, it is vital that you pay attention to how full your hopper is getting on your harvester. Once you reach 100%, you're at full capacity with your combine, it will automatically shut the header off, it'll lift the header, but the tractor will not stop. So for an example, uh, if I were at full now, the combine would stop, it would raise up, and then if I'm not paying attention, I'm gonna continue driving forward. The big deal with that is, as you can see here, this is what they call crop destruction. So I have now driven over top of some crop rather than harvest it. So now I have lost that crop there. So pay attention to where you're at with your combine harvester. If you're someone who doesn't want to deal with crop destruction, that's absolutely fine. I'll show you where you guys can turn that setting off. So in game settings here, I touched on a little bit of this stuff when in the first video, but I'll just kind of briefly recap. If you're not a fan of autosave, you can actually turn autosave off. You can have it five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Those are your options there. Time scale, how fast time passes in game. You can turn that all the way down to real time or 0.5. It typically, anybody that's running like a series, depending on what they have going on, some people I've seen will turn it down to 0.5 just to slow time down enough to where they can get a lot of different things done and try to maximize the, the money that they're making that day. Uh, some people doing like role play series or survival series will have this turned up to five times just to make the day progress a little bit faster, uh, which makes the player feel like the pinch of, I need to prioritize my chores around the farm so I can make money. And it kind of forces you to move on to the next day rather than just having time go by super slow to where you can make all sorts of money. You can stay in the same month for hours beyond hours before you absolutely have to move on to the next month. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to leave that at five times. Economy difficulty, you can turn up all the way to hard. It just affects the pricing of some of the things that you're going to sell. Like for an example, the oat here that we're harvesting off this field. Uh, if we turn this up to hard, uh, we're going to make less money per 1000 liters of, of the harvest. 
Traffic on the map, you can turn on and off. Seasonal growth is kind of relates back to our crop calendar. Days per month, you can actually turn this up and have your months have three separate days in each month. I typically leave my days at one day months. Snow, you can turn on and off. Crop destruction, though, here's where we kind of get into some things that will make the game a little bit more be uh, beginner friendly. If you're not too concerned about crop destruction, you can go ahead and turn that off. And then if you drive over top of a field that you own, you can't drive through someone else's field and destroy their crops. It only, it will only happen in a field that you own. But if we turn this off, then it's not a factor. You can drive all over your field and you're not going to destroy any crops. But for right now, we'll get back into our harvester. We'll finish up this pass here. Uh, the last pass we need to do to complete the headlands. And I'm going to go ahead and lift up the header for this. All right, so you can see down in the lower right-hand corner, we have completed 34% uh, of the max capacity for this combine harvester. Now what I'd like to do is I'm going to assume that we are at max capacity right now and that I need to empty my combine so I can continue um, my work on the field itself. So again, left bumper, and for me, it's uh, down on the D-pad. We'll bring the pipe out, and I'm simply just going to drive this up so it's over top of my trailer, and the oat is automatically going to start to discharge into the trailer. And now once that oat is completed, I'm going to drive off. I'm going to left bumper down on my D-pad on my controller, and the pipe's going to go back in. I'm going to lower the combine header, and I can go right back to working on this field, and I can finish uh, harvesting this oat field. And then again, every time I'm at max capacity within the harvester, I'm gonna make a trip over here to this trailer. I'm gonna tip the grain into that trailer and, and take it to its appropriate place where I wanna sell it. Or if I'm just gonna keep it in my own silo system, I'll take it over there and I will tip it. So for the last part of the video, this part here is probably the most simplistic part of this whole entire process of harvesting fields. But let's just go ahead and say that we have completed our harvest on field 41, our, or our trailer is full of oat, and we have nothing else to do but to empty this trailer before we can uh, continue working with the combine or even empty the combine again. Like I mentioned before, we have a couple different options with this. We, I can come over here to my silo system, and I can pull up over top of this grate right here and I could empty out. You can see down there at the bottom center of the screen, I get right button plus Y, and that will start the tipping process into our silos. And I do have a couple different options. Maybe I just want to put a specific amount of oat into my silo system. I'm just going to kind of watch the number, and I'm going to say, boom. I only wanted to put 600 liters of oat into my silo system. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take a peek. Uh, actually, it's more like 932 liters, but that's perfect that's the that's roughly the amount that i wanted to put into my silo system because that's what i need for something that i'm going to do later the other option that i have is i can come in here and take a look at where items are selling so right now if i come to the price page here which is like the little bar graph on the left side of the screen just underneath the cloud and above the tractor I come over here and i take a look at oat it's gonna tell me that I have 932 liters in storage, which is outstanding, it's good. So that's another way you can track and see how much of each item that you have stored in your silo systems on your farm. But I'm good with what we have stored. I don't really wanna to touch that 932 liters for the purposes of what we're doing now. But what I do would like to do is go sell off the rest of my oat. Now I'm gonna come in here and take a look at where uh, I can get the highest price currently for my oat. And let's just say right now, so 1518 Goldcrest Valley, that's the best place that we're going to get for selling oats. So I can highlight that and I can tag it. And then that is actually going to show up on the map. Now, this is a very convenient location because this is going to require you to use the train on Elm Creek. Now, I didn't really anticipate doing this, but I figure this is actually a great uh, target of opportunity to talk about utilizing the train on Elm Creek. So I'm going to make my way over there. Hopefully I remember how to use this train correctly so that I don't steer you guys wrong. But uh, once we make it over there, we'll catch back up with you guys and I'll walk you through how to utilize the train on Elm Creek. 
And if you ever do tag a place on a map and you're kind of wondering where you need to go, yeah. it's going to flash for you on your mini map. As you can see, when I make the map bigger, you can see that it's flashing down there in the lower left hand corner. You can also just kind of look around for the green beam that goes up into the sky. That's going to let you know that the place that you have tagged, uh, where its approximate location is. So we're going to continue our travels over there. This tractor is not the most uh, speedy tractor. But uh, once we get there, we'll go ahead and walk through how to utilize the train. All right, so we have arrived to the silo system that the train relies on to get uh, filled up with whatever product that you're trying to sell off. So when you arrive here, uh, just so you guys can see on the map where we are, we're just down above field 59 on Elm Creek. There's going to be this large silo system here that you're going to be able to drive up in. And we are similar to our own silo system. It's going to give us the option to tip this oat. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to tip the remaining 2,000 liters of oat into the silo system here uh, for the train yard. And I'll show you guys where we can actually go over to call for the train to arrive and then how we can control the train in order to fill up the grain carts there and then send the train off to sell this product for us. So once you have tipped your product into the silo system here, so we were just up in there in that little opening underneath the GW uh, symbol right above that doorway there. So we just uh, kind of drove back the way we were coming from and you'll see that there's this gray box down here with an explanation point next to it. And once you're here, you're gonna get a control input, left thumbstick button for uh, Xbox controller, rent train for $1,000 per hour, boom. So we have rented the train and then it's also gonna give you an arrival or an anticipated arrival. So right now, currently the train is 2.4 kilometers away. So as soon as the train arrives here at the station, we'll, I'll walk you guys through step-by-step step how to utilize it to sell off your product. All right, the final 250 meters for the train to arrive. I'm not sure what direction it's gonna be coming from. Ah, there it is. All right, so the train was actually coming up from behind us. So once the train is here, it, it functions just like any other vehicle. As soon as it comes to a stop, we'll actually be able to enter into the train ourselves and actually drive the train. And then you'll see, similar to the Combine Harvester, you're gonna see up across the top, we have the different options that highlight just above the right bumper icon. And then if we were to kind of zoom out just a little bit, you would see that we have all different styles of carts attached to this train so we're just going to pull up alongside this grain silo system here and you can see the blue symbol here off in the distance and all we're going to really focus on doing is we're just going to pull the train up as far as we really can and at this point here i'm going to start to slow it down just a little bit because what i want to make sure of is that we put all of our product into the correct cart so this looks pretty good right here so for this first cart, let me make sure I get this one highlighted. I'll go ahead and I will open the cover on, oh, maybe not. Am I on the right one? Nope, I'm on the third one back there. You can see that gray trailer back there is the one that is currently opening and closing. All right, so once we are here, it's not gonna give me the option to fill this train car up because it recognizes that it's closed. But as soon as I open this cover, Oh, there's the first one. So to open up the door on the first grain cart is actually left on the D-pad while holding the left bumper. And to open it up on the third cart is up on the D-pad. So now I get the option to start filling. You can see here, if I just press down left thumbstick, it brings up the, sil the silo system. And here is my 2,037 liters of oat. So I'm going to say okay to that. It spits it into the cart. It's very quick, very efficient. You can see down the lower right hand corner of the screen, I now have 2000 liters of this grain stored on this train cart. Once that's done, ladies and gentlemen, the only thing left to do is drive the train. That is it. That is all that is left to do. You're gonna drive this train for a certain amount of time. We're basically gonna cross the map. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set my cruise control right now. And if I pull up the map itself, you guys can see that there is a train, there is a railroad track system that runs all the way through the center of the map here. Once we hit this point down here, our oat will sell off. Now, the importance of talking about the train, and I didn't really even think about it initially when I was sitting down and kind of thinking of how I wanted this video to go for harvesting the fields. 
I didn't think about the train necessarily until I had actually seen the train going by on the map as I was getting set up for this video. And now I remembered the big struggles I had when I first got started and I wanted to sell stuff at the Elm Creek station, um, similar to the one that we have selected right now for selling our oat, uh, Goldcrest Valley, I'm sorry. Goldcrest Valley, I didn't know how to use the train. I didn't know it was a thing. I didn't know that that's how you sold product off. And so what I did is I drove all the way out here to the edge of the map. I had no idea what I was doing. And I thought I just had to basically throw my product. I had bales at the time. Um, I thought I just had to like throw my bales across the, the border of the map. And that, that's not what it was. It wasn't until I learned about that the train was actually a functional part of selling product that I understood that I was doing everything completely wrong. So I felt like this was a great opportunity to talk about the train. Now, the train is gonna leave Elm Creek and it's gonna drive to Goldcrest Valley and will return on the other side of the map, which is where we currently just come from. Do you wanna sell your loaded goods at Goldcrest Valley? Yes. Now you're gonna see up at the top, we get a vehicle leasing cost because the train cost us $1,000 per hour to rent, but we also get a harvest income. We got $3,100 for turning in 2,000 liters of oat. Again, just keep in mind that different combine harvesters have different capacities that they can hold as you're harvesting the field. Uh, make sure that you're utilizing all the correct buttons that you have mapped for the game uh, in order to lower the header, turn the header on, raise the header, turn the header off. And then keep in mind too, you also have to have your harvester unfolded. You can see here, if I lower the header, and I go ahead and turn this on, it tells me that I need to first unfold the harvester. Crop destruction is another big thing. If you're not paying attention and your combine becomes full of product, the header's gonna turn off. You're gonna drive through your crop before you recognize what's really going on and you're gonna destroy a certain amount of your crop for however far you drive into it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, tip your stuff into your trailers. You can do tandem trailers. So you can have two trailers connected uh, together, which typically will help you out. Uh, smaller fields like this, I would say that you might not even need tandem trailers depending on how much grain uh, the trailers do hold. And if you have any questions about how much a trailer will hold, uh, if you take a look down here across the bottom, so a couple points of data that is going to be good to know is this one here, this trailer, which is the one that we actually start with in game uh, as a new farmer on Elm Creek, holds 8,000 uh, liters, and we it'll hold all of these different products here. As we kind of work our way up and we get into more expensive trailers, you'll see that they actually increase their capacity. They still hold, for the most part, they'll all hold the same exact things. And then you can get up into your even bigger trailers, 33,000, all the way, I mean, even into semi-trailers. So it really just depends on what the need is. So pay attention to the capacity of your trailers when you are in the market for purchasing. Um, again, if you are doing a new farmer start on Elm Creek, you will start with the Welger DK-115, which holds 8,000 liters. You can buy a second one of these trailers and do tandems. Uh, this second trailer would hook up to the back of your first trailer, and you'll have 16,000 liters that way available to you. But that's where doing just a little bit of math. Would I rather spend 23,000 on two trailers, or would I rather just spend 17,000 on one trailer? And then I can also get an extension. So for $20,000, I can get 22,000 liters um, in this trailer here, which is cheaper than buying a second Welger DK-115. Also, I could just come down here too. And if I'm in a pinch and need some extra money, I'll just go ahead and sell this one here. Combine harvesters are the same exact way. So taking a look at your horsepower, 310, uh, the transmission style, so it's a variable. There's going to be some differences out there, but I wouldn't get too hemmed up or wrapped up into any of this. Uh, your fuel usage, it's max speed, and then how much capacity the combine can hold. This is a super important number to pay attention to here because, again, if you have larger fields and your combine only holds 8,500 liters, you're gonna be making multiple trips over to your grain trailers to tip your uh, harvesters as you're uh, harvesting that field. Looking across the board here at all of our different style harvesters, so right here we have the Deutzfar Topliner 4090, and if we were to upgrade to, let's use this New Holland CH7, we can see here it bumps up to 9,300. We can go to a case, holds 10.5. 
I got a couple. Uh, actually, nope, I did not activate any of my mods for this episode here because, I again, I want to save that for a later. But you can see here, if you have a range of capacity, it's going to be... Uh, I thought there would be somewhere in here where it would actually talk about increasing capacities. But sometimes you'll have an option to increase capacity and it's going to cost you extra money. A lot of the times, too, you'll have some uh, engine upgrades that will cost you extra money as well. If we go with the ideal 8T, you can see here our capacity changes. We bump this up to the 9T. Our capacity goes up to 17,000. That's, that's quite a bit. That is quite a bit. Mine is getting into some modded combine harvesters. That's, that's quite a bit of capacity there. And then the Kloss Lexian 8900 holds 18,000 liters. Now, the last thing that I'll talk about is how do we know which headers that we need to buy our lease to go along with our combine harvesters? Basically, can I lease this Massey Ferguson but also get a John Deere header to go on this Massey Ferguson? Well, the answer to that question lies down here where you see combinations. So if you're on mouse and keyboard, you can just click on combinations, hit C for combinations. Or if you're utilizing controller, I'll give it just a minute, I can hit my right thumbstick on there. And this will show me compatible headers that go with that combine harvester. So don't go out and like lease or buy a John Deere header because you really like the way it looks, or maybe it's a, a good working with, like for an example, this Massey Ferguson Power Flow, 40 foot, 12 meters. The Dynaflex is also a 12 meter. This is a nine meter. And then that's a 12 meter as well. Whereas if I were to go back and just look at headers themselves, there are two different style headers, which I'll talk about briefly as well. Let's just say I wanted to lease this John Deere 7.6 meter uh, header. I don't, I don't have an overly large field. It's fine. I'm just going to go ahead. I would lease this header and be like, okay, now I need a combine to go with that. I come in here and I say, wow, this, this Massey Ferguson or this Fent, that's a really nice combine. I'm going to lease this one here. Once I do, I realize, oh man, my John Deere header that I just spent money on doesn't fit that tractor. So definitely always make it a good habit to check your combinations. All you got to do is click once on the combine, click combinations, and it will show you exactly what is compatible with that harvester. Now, let's, the last thing that we need to talk about is the different style headers. So these headers here, if you're curious as to what they will harvest, always make a practice of looking at your grain symbols down here. So we have wheat, barley, oat, canola, soybean, and sorghum. All of these headers, for the most part, are going to do those crops. That's going to be pretty standard across the board for these style headers. We got a sunflower header here, which there are some other options for doing sunflowers as well. But big key takeaway, make sure you're paying attention to the type of crop that these headers work for. Now, let's say you got a corn field. Well, that means we need a corn header. Now, these headers here will also do sunflowers. The only time you're ever going to use a corn header is exactly for that, for corn fields or for a sunflower field. That is it. So don't, uh, don't lease or buy the incorrect header and then try to go do a corn field when this does not work with cornfields. So those are some other big things to keep in mind when you're doing some combine harvesting, either for contracts or for your own fields that you own in game. But ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for the beginner series on harvesting your fields. I hope you guys found this video somewhat useful and helps you get started or helps you to take a step in the right direction when you're getting started here on Farming Simulator. Keep an eye out and we have plenty of other beginner series videos uh, to help get you through some of the basics of the game and to help get you started on your way so that you can better enjoy your time in Farming Simulator 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, we will catch you in the next video.